Um, I'm not a complete newbie to Civi, but I'm relatively new. I have gone to a CiviCon before. Um, I came to the organization about a year ago, and that was my sort of first interaction with Civi CRM. So I've been on a very steep learning curve in the last um, 12 months, but have enjoyed every second of it. Um, Chris is my colleague, he's the CRM and data manager, and can you explain your relationship with Civi? Um, yeah, sure. So I've been um, working with Civi for about four years now. Um, so Leukemia and Research is the second uh, not-for-profit that I've worked with um, for Civi. Um, so my sort of uh, daily job is to um, sort of um, sort out our end users, uh, make sure that they are using the system correctly um, and it meets our business um, requirements, um, and then working with Parvez and his team at Vader to um, develop the system um, to, in order to, for it to meet our, our requirements. Um, Parvez on the end who just wanders around and <laughs> comes up to the table whenever he feels like it. Um, I don't know, if you do need to describe uh, your experience with Civi, everyone <laughs> knows what you do, right? Um, so I'm just going to very quickly talk about us as an organisation and the organisation's connection to Civi. Um, then I'll give you a brief overview about what we're going to talk about. Um, I'll give you a bit of background about what we've done in the last year. And Chris will talk about the sort of solution that we've come up with recently and hopefully touch wood, give a demonstration, a live demonstration. They always work, don't they? So we are the largest blood cancer charity in the UK. We were founded back in 1960. Um, as an organization, we have a, a quite a large open source policy. Everything we try to do, we always try open source first. We have an internal development team, an internal digital team. Um, so we also try to do a lot of stuff in-house ourselves. And obviously for specialist projects, we have people like Parvez who can help us out immensely. Um, we started using CVCRM back in 2011, a long, before, long, long, long time before I started. Um, and currently, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but we have a, a roughly about 600,000 contacts. And we process mm -hmm. around 2 million transactions a year <coughs> using Civi. Um, and there's a number there I can't read. Uh, yeah, and that's, that 2 million contributions mostly contribute for our 20 million income, which we have um, annually as a, as a charity. Um, we're probably the largest. So I should have done that and see each other. We are probably the largest install, one of the largest installs in the UK, um, which is great for us because it, it allows us to have conversations with people like Parvez about what's going on and where we can take things. But what we're trying to do is encourage other larger organizations to get on board with us so we can actually sort of, the whole peer support thing that Stormy mentioned earlier is, would be very helpful for us there in the UK to, to sort of get a better understanding about what's going on. So as an organization, we've moved away from, our name suggests, research. So we do a lot of clinical research, but we've very much moved away from that, and we're trying to put um, patients and users at the heart of what we do, and we're trying to do more support work. And for me, that's where Civi comes in. Um, and today, we're going to talk about not so much the patient side of things, but the fundraising side of things, and how we support people who want to give us money. Um, and in the UK, it's slightly different how people raise money for charity, so I'll talk through a, a very quickly a little bit about that. So, this is what we're going to talk about. I'll warn you now, we love acronyms. Everything has an acronym. This stands for Digital Fundraising Platform, or PAGES, depending on who you speak to. Um, it is the mechanism for people who want to support other people so they can give money to those people that eventually come to us. It's a convoluted way of us getting money. Don't worry, I will explain it better later. Um, so what I'll, I'll talk about first is the why we did this. Why do we need this sort of platform? Um, then I'll briefly discuss what it is. Um, I'll talk about the good stuff that happened. I'll talk about the bad stuff that happened. Um, it's not that ugly, but I'll talk about the, the reasons that we've identified for a need to change. And then finally, Chris will talk about the solution that we've come up utilizing PCPs, personal campaign pages. Um, feel free to shout questions out as I'm going through this, by the way. Please do interrupt. So first up, uh, I'll talk about the digital fundraising pages. We launched these probably about a year and a half ago now. I'm sort of looking at you. Um, and it was very much a test case of can we do this? Will this work? Um, the reason we launched is for these wonderful people here. These, this is a massive amount of income for us. Uh, as I say, we have about a 20 million voluntary income annually. Five million comes from people like this who run, swim, cycle, do all manner of crazy things for us. 
Another five million comes from uh, regional fundraisers, so events like this that we put on, but on a much smaller scale. And what happens is normally a lot of that money comes through entry fees, but a lot of it comes from their friends and families giving them money to give to us. So it's really how do we sort of bridge that gap? How do we get that money from these people to us? Um, in the UK, that's covered by predominantly by third-party organizations. These are companies who uh, will make money from people giving money to charities, which, in my mind, is a terrible thing. Um, these are the three, well, Just Giving's the biggest. Um, we get about four million through Just Giving, I think, just under four million. Um, and the fact that these sites exist in the UK, for me, highlights a gap, and also slightly highlights where charities have dropped the ball a little bit. We should have been first on these. It shouldn't have been up to Just Giving to make something that they make money out of. Um, so I hold my hand up as a not-for-profit employee for not doing this earlier. I'll just ask, actually, has anyone ever heard of um, any of these organizations before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so these organizations exist. So actually, why on earth would we build our own? What's the point? What, do, what are we going to add to it, and what can we get out of it? The main thing for us, it's kind of financial, really. Um, someone like Just Giving will take, well, at the top level, a 5% commission from any donation that goes to a charity. They will also have a sort of standing charge that they charge the charity for using them as an organization, and they will charge you per thousand pounds donation um, a sort of transaction fee. So actually, if you're talking about that four million, 5% doesn't seem a lot, but if you add all those up, it comes to about half a million a year, which is half a million pounds we could be helping people who have blood cancer, which mm -hmm. for me is a, a sort of key thing. Um, the other element I think Chris will just touch on is the sort of data element of it. Yeah, um, so obviously when if we have sort of hundreds or thousands of fundraising pages being managed by these third party organizations, um, that's a huge amount of donor data that's flowing into those organizations. Um, however, we actually get to see very, very little of that, um, and that's because of the UK data protection laws. Um, the majority of donors, when they're making sponsorship um, to their friend or families, um, you know, to, the, to these fundraising pages, they opt not to have their contact details shared with us. Um, and that's really, really frustrating from a data manager acquisition point of view. Because it, um, it means that these people are sort of semi-interacting with us as an organization, but we're not getting anything out of it. And particularly with Virgin Money Giving, um, it's really distressing because you actually see all of that information in the huge transaction files that they send us. So all of the donor details, their names, their addresses, phone numbers, um, emails, and it is illegal for us to put them onto our database and do anything with them. So it's really quite um, quite annoying and frustrating, shall we say, to, that these giving vehicles are so huge in the UK, but actually um, they, can, they can actually hold back um, acquisition work. And the admin element of it as well, the fact that somebody, when we are allowed to touch that data, somebody has to transfer that in, and it's just, it's a process that shouldn't be there. It's a process that we should house on our own site. Um, so there's a time aspect to it, there's a monetary aspect to it, there's a lot of reasons why we should be taking responsibility for people that want to support us as a charity. I guess there's also the thing about um, keeping people within our website environment as well. Um, so when people are being sent off to use these um, giving vehicles, the, we have very little control over the branding and styling of those pages. Um, Yes, they're well-respected organizations, so you don't get any drop-offs in donations from that respect, but it's very difficult for us to, um, as an organization, to get our messaging across mm -hmm. us using those platforms. And they also, I mean, this sounds like we're just sitting here bashing third-party <laughs> donation systems, but they also slightly dilute the sort of charity water as well. Not charity water as in the charity's water. But they, they don't show the individual charities. They sort of mush them all together, and you very, it's very difficult to sort of climb above where probably a mid-sized charity in the UK, and for us, we get quite easily swamped by the larger cancer charities and larger charities that are out there. So for these organizations, especially with their move now to more social-style platforms, it's very difficult for us to get our voices heard. So, oh, what did we actually do? I'll get up a picture of myself there. Um, so we looked at a solution that, well, basically is this. This is a picture of me. I'm not a very good blogger, as you can see. There are no blogs here. Um, and someone's very cheap who gave me two pounds, but I think that was a test donation. <laughs> So this is kind of what we, this was our first run at it. This was our sort of beta test the water, will this work um, plan. 
So you have options for people to donate to me. They can leave me a nice message. Um, I can put a little bio up there to explain why I'm doing it. There's a totalizer that keeps track of all my donations. I can, if I wasn't so lazy, blog. And somewhere down here, you can also upload a video to try and encourage people and engage people and how they do it. Um, this was, as I say, very much, this was launched a year, about a year and a half ago by my predecessor. And it was very much a test case. It was, will this work? Will people come to our site and give money through our site? Um, and because of that and, and time restrictions and things like this, it's not moving on. It was very much a Drupal solution to a problem that used Civi, that sort of put data into Civi, and that was it. It, it was done for speed. It was done for many reasons. I'm sure you could <laughs> had many tough conversations about why it was done this way. Um, but it was to get something out there to prove a point, to prove a case. Will this actually work? This was very much a phase one, and that hopefully is the phase two, which we will get to. Um, because this was a beta, we, I'm getting too close to that microphone, I think. Um, because this was a beta, we only soft launched this on a couple of our sort of flagship events. Uh, the first one was Bikeathon. That's Chris there, as soon as I put a photo of myself up. Um, we run two large bikeathon events, one in London and one in Birmingham in the UK, and we also run a slightly more serious London to Paris cycle ride, which is for around 300 cyclists. So we decided to stick to these main flagship events and let people use this as a system to sort of test the water. And from that kind of limited group of people, we identified things that, that were good. We actually did some things right, which is always fun. Um, from feedback that our insight team gathered, we found that about 60% of people that did those events um, used our pages, which is over half, which in my <coughs> book is a win. And of that 60%, about 80% of them stated that the experience was good or very good. I will caveat that with anybody that supports a charity often thinks everything you're doing is good, even if it's not so good, but um, we'll just take that on face value for now. Um, in a year, we took about 600,000 pounds, which when you compare it to the four million that goes through Just Giving, it doesn't sound that much, but when you consider this was for three events with a total participant of about five and a half thousand, that's not a bad, bad amount of money to go through a, a platform. So that for us was a, another win. As Chris touched on, it was that idea of consistent branding. So we had people coming to our site and we could easily explain who we are. We could use our branding. They knew what we did. They knew what we stood for and we could explain why the person was supporting us, and it gave that more sort of personal touch and that connection to, to why we were doing what we were doing. That ever so slightly increased the average donation for Bikeathon at least. Um, it, well, it isn't a massive increase, it was, but any, every penny counts, as they say. But the most important thing, one of the big important things was actually we saw sign-ups for our newsletter substantially go up for people that came through the um, DFP side of things as opposed to those that came through Just Giving. So 10 to 15% of people who donated through Just Giving signed up for a newsletter, but 35 to 40% signed up when they came through our site, which is a massive amount of data for us and, and gives us a whole new audience that we can tap into. And anecdotally, people gave us nice bits of feedback. People liked the idea that Just Giving wasn't stealing 5% or more of the donation that they were trying to give to us to, to help beat blood cancer. So that this was nice feedback, and this was sort of the sort of a positive side of what happened. Sadly, in my team, we saw the other side of it and spent a lot of time running around and, I'd say, shouting at people like Harvest to try and make him help us, um, of what sort of stuff didn't work and where this fell down slightly. Um, this was a very much a bespoke solution. This was tr us trying to prove a case, as I keep saying. Um, so there were issues with the way it's... It sort of API the data, the sort of, I sort of discussed, but the big one for me was around scaling. We launched this as a test and we expected maybe tens to 100 donations a day. At its peak, we were getting around 1,000 donations a day, which caused quite a few problems. Uh, we had table lockups, we had data being stored that didn't have all the sort of attributes against it. It caused massive problems for our finance team who couldn't process some of these transactions because we didn't have all the required data. I'm trying to remember all the other issues. Can you remember any others? They were sort of the two problems mm -hmm. that we had. And this was slightly born out of uh, this kind of trying to pass data through many systems. We weren't, DFP itself didn't have a home. It didn't have one single system that ruled the rest of them. It kind of relied on little bits of others 
and didn't necessarily, one didn't sort of own it, is what I'm trying to say. So it, it just caused many, many problems. Um, so we recognized from those issues and from the fact that I had far more gray hair in September than I did in July, was that we needed to change something. We needed to fix some of these problems. Um, part of that was out of this idea that this system wasn't working for us. It was causing us problems. It was falling down at times where we were very busy and we couldn't afford for it to fall down because this is a financial transaction. Um, we also recognized that we still want to scale this further. We want to take this to the next level. We want to go more people, more events, more money. We want to keep building on this so that we can make, well, I'm going to do the party line and go and beat blood cancer. But that's <laughs> not um, so we recognized that something needed to change. We also recognized that we wanted to take it beyond the individual. So at the moment, this is the system um, looked after me as a person wanting to do an event and people wanting to donate to me. But we quickly recognized that people like to do things together. So we wanted to give them the option of banding together and creating a team page so they could do the, the, the event as themselves, but also in a group of people. But then also we recognized that people want to do it by themselves and then as a group in memory of a loved one that might have passed away because of blood cancer, or in celebration of someone who is in remission or for an event like a wedding. And we also recognized that people wanted to keep a long-term sort of record, a memorial of someone that's passed away and allow other people to donate to that and allow other people to do events to this. So suddenly this picture started becoming more and more complicated and I began to have more and more sleep sleepless nights. Um, but what we recognized was this idea of having a single solution um, that, yes, we would skin this in a Drupal sort of front end, but at its heart, it was a civvy solution that used contribution forms, that used civvy pages, that all these things to help, help keep all that data in one place and to help sort of ensure that there weren't, wasn't any issues when things got passed across. This is kind of what we came up with. Had to get this on the screen. It took me ages to draw. <laughs> um, but I put it up there, and now I'm going to let Chris talk through it. So this is sort of what we just passed to you and said, can you build it, please? <laughs> That's great. Um, so we approached um, the sort of PCP project. Um, so, we, you know, so we decided DFP is not meeting our requirements anymore. Uh, we can't go through another summer of events um, as we did last year. So um, let's try and move DFP uh, further into PCP and into Civi. So we approached this project from um, answering sort of three key questions from the fundraiser's perspective. So the first part of that diagram um, focuses on what the fundraiser is doing. Uh, the second one focuses on who, um, who that fundraiser is doing it with, um, if anyone. Um, and the third aspect of it is uh, why are they doing a particular event for us? So in terms of the what, we sort of, um, we came up with sort of two different journeys. Um, the first one fo focusing on sort of very organized, um, specific sporting events. Um, and so in the UK, there, there are things like the London Marathon um, or our Bikeathon events, as Richard just mentioned. So they're sort of mass participation, very well organized, um, often with uh, third party sort of companies that, that are actually organizing them for us. And they require registration fees. Um, and uh, you know, sort of quite a lot of data being collected from participants in order to actually register, um, and often with payment as well. Uh, the second um, sort of area of fundraising activity um, that we came across was people doing their own thing for us, um, and that could be sort of all sorts of uh, fundraising events, and um, which were sort of very ad hoc, um, very individual, um, at sort of carried out at the local level. Um, has anyone heard of Comic Relief or Children in Need at all? So the, the, these are two huge campaigns in the UK, um, which have a lot of sort of press and TV coverage. Um, they're annual campaigns which place focus on people doing their own sort of individual fundraising events. Um, so that could be things like sitting in a bathtub of baked beans, um, if anyone knows what, what baked beans crazy are. Crazy in the UK, yeah. that's what we do. Um, or like shaving your hair off or dyeing your hair a certain color, you know, very, very kind of um, sort of individual um, fundraising events, but which raise money for, um, for the charity that you're doing it for. 
the next question that we had was, um, so who are our fundraisers going to uh, participate in these activities with? Well, um, a lot of people do it on their own. So they will just uh, t sort of rock up and register for a 10K run um, or a half marathon or a full marathon. And they're just happy just sort of, you know, doing it on their own, raising money for us um, at the charity, which is fine. Um, or increasingly, they want to do it as part of a team. So they want to do it with a group of work colleagues um, or they want to do it with their siblings. Um, and we found that particularly with our, um, our cycling events um, and lo the London to Paris bike ride as well. You know, sometimes we'd get um, teams of 10 or 12 people. Um, so we, need, we definitely need a PCP to effectively manage um, sort of the team aspect um, of fundraising. And then the, th the third aspect of that is um, if people were doing it um, through our corporate partnership. So for example, um, at the moment we have a, um, a partnership with uh, Wix, which is a huge um, sort of homeware department store in the UK. So if you think of like Home Depot type um, organization, um, so we have lots of um, sort of fundraising teams uh, raising money for us who actually work for Wix. Um, so that's, that's great that they're sort of our corporate partner and they're really sort of um, actively uh, fundraising for us. So the third question is sort of um, drilling down and, um, and analyzing why people are fundraising for us. And we came up with these sort of three, three main journeys. Um, so the first one is just sort of people like to fundraise. Um, so for example, they like the particular sporting event. Um, and, or, and or they like us as a charity um, because we're helping to beat blood cancer. Um, the second one, as Rich mentioned briefly, um, is to do it in memory of someone um, so who's passed away um, as a result of having blood cancer. Um, and the third journey is um, doing it in support of someone um, who is either in remission or, again, um, in regards to sort of a particular birthday or a wedding, etc. So we kind of sort of, you know, that was the motivation for starting the PCP project. And the next major stage of that was to try and work out how are we going to build this um, while um, sort of learning from the mistakes that we had made with the DFP project, the digital fundraising platform. So it became paramount that um, we had to use Civi um, and we needed to use it in a more integrated way um, than when we were using DFP. Um, and obviously, myself as being the CRM manager um, and continually pushing for Civi to be the single source of truth within our organization, you know, I said, well, you know, we either use Civi or we don't do this project at all. The benefits of um, using PCPs uh, within Civi are we keep all the data in one place. Um, and the fact that we're doing this project, again, means that we can use the hard and soft credit functionality on contributions correctly. Because um, that's one thing that we hadn't quite been doing right before. Um, we could get accurate reporting um, of our participants, so actually drilling down to the participant level, seeing who's raising the most money, comparing that to their to demographic data that we can get on their sort of household, so that we can sort of work out in the future and for future events who to more effectively target to sign up for those events. Uh, we wanted PCPs to um, exclusively use CV contribution pages, um, which completely removes the need for APIs um, with regards to contributions, um, which is, again, where we um, sort of fell over with the DFP project. And we wanted to make use of additional uh, CV functionality. So for example, the use of uh, scheduled mailings um, off the back of activities um, being the triggers. So for example, um, in PCP phase two, which we're moving on to, um, once a fundraiser reaches a certain level, um, for example, they raise 1500 pounds, um, they would get sort of an email trigger congratulating them, maybe encouraging them to increase their fundraising target even more. And I see us in the future using um, A-B testing um, of our PCP fundraisers when we move to or six. Um, and so the benefit of having all of our data within PCPs within Civi is that we can do complex uh, backend queries in SQL um, and export that information into Pentaho to um, visualize it in um, sort of very sort of graphical ways for 
um, end user teams who may not be as uh, sort of technically savvy as the CRM slash digital team. Um, so for example, the sports team, um, of which sort of, you know, PCPs are that they are one of the main clients um, of this product within um, our organization. We're quite lucky as an organization that we've had, because civi has been around for so long, we have quite a lot of buy-in across the organization and where there'll be a few grumbles every now and again, a lot of people do use it. So we do have people requesting data and they understand to some level what they can get out of it as for the individual departments, which is quite useful as well. So how do we do the what? Um, so we will um, we manage our sporting events through the events module. Um, so you know at the start of each year, um, we will create all the um, events that we know that we're going to hold over the summer. So all the major sporting events, um, etc., and you know a, a few sort of gala dinners as well and stuff. Um, so they will have their um, event IDs and the associated campaign IDs. Um, and then in regards to the sort of doing um, a fundraiser doing their own thing, um, we've decided, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, we've decided not to do them through PCPs, but we're managing them through contribution pages. Is that right? Doing your own. Doing your own doing thing. Your own, yeah, so doing your own. So yeah. Civi doesn't really deal with um, a personal event at the moment. So if, if, a, if a donor wants to create their own event, you don't really want an event in Civi and that being managed. So what we do at Leukemia Lymphoma is we have bucket events for the people can register for if they're doing their own thing. Uh, um, and that means that the campaign for the contribution with all of the data around that is kind of linked to that one event and it's all it's all funneled correctly. So um, for the PCPs, yeah, so it will be it'll be a contribution page linked to a campaign rather than an event uh, PCP as such. Yeah. Because so with the aim being that we don't want hundreds and hundreds of additional event IDs being created in Civi when we already have enough, um, and they are quite, uh, they can be quite challenging to to manage just in it just in its current setup. And what that additional would give us is very little. I mean, we don't need to know that ten people who sat in a bath of beans raised X. It's the, the benefit of doing that just doesn't really sort of weigh out. Um, so how do we, um, how will we get PCP to sort of um, make the connections between who's doing what? So um, we use relationship links to uh, link individuals to teams, uh, to link teams to organizations. Um, and then in, in phase two, we'll also be linking um, the in memory and uh, tribute pages to um, individuals and teams as well. And um, as I mentioned before, we will use um, soft credits. Um, so the way that works is that um, when anyone makes a donation to any page, um, the hard credit will sit on the um, donor's contact record and the soft credit will sit um, on, the, um, on the fundraiser's record. Have I got that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. on the fundraiser's record. And that yeah. eventually, when we get into phase two, gets quite complicated because we could have an individual doing an event as part of a team who is doing it in memory of somebody, but that in memory might be different from the person who's individually doing it in memory of. And the way the soft credits have to work there becomes quite convoluted. And we've tried to map that out in a simpler or yeah. sort of possible way. Oh yeah, I've got, that, got in that right. In another slide, yeah, that great. So um, PCPs will have, um, well, actually five different um, contact subtypes. So an organization slash corporate partner one, um, a team subtype, an in memory slash tribute uh, subtype and in celebration, um, and then just an individual fundraiser one. So what we've built so far um, is we have built the functionality for individuals and teams um, to sign up to sporting events and create their PCP fundraising pages. Um, and so, yeah, again, apologies for the acronyms here. Um, so we have personal campaign pages, um, but then we have team campaign pages. So it, it was just easy for us when we were sort of in the development stage of this project to refer to PCPs as individual fundraising ones and TCPs as team uh, fundraising pages, plus the corporate partner link. Um, I hope that slide doesn't put too many people off. Um, the rules that we use for phase one is that every single individual um, and every team will have a um, personal campaign page, um, and any donation that's made um, to a PCP the hard credit will sit on the sponsor's record, 
um, and a donation will have between one and four soft credits. Um, so for example, if in, in its most simplistic form, you have a sponsor and an individual fundraiser. So as I said, the hard credit will go onto the sponsor's record and the soft credit will go onto the fundraiser's record. However, if that fundraiser is part of a team, then there will be a second soft credit to the team which sits um, one level above that fundraiser. And again, if there's an organization or a corporate partner um, that that team is a member of, um, then that's a third soft credit that will apply to that, to that one hard credit, if that makes sense. I have a question. Yeah. Why did they assign the hard credit to the sponsor and not to the person who's donating? It is weird. Yeah, so the sponsor is the person who's actually making that donation. Okay, so not the person who's driving the, the bus, it's not the person who's making the donation. No, the no. Um, but actually, that y you raise an interesting point because um, when we use those third-party giving vehicles, um, because most of the time you only have access to the fundraiser's information, what a lot of charities do is they actually import the transactions to the fundraiser's record because they don't have access to the sponsor or the donor's record. But that actually really messes up your reporting because it starts to make your fundraisers look like major donors um, when actually they're technically not. Um, yes, they solicited the donation, but they actually haven't, they're, they're not the owner of the donation, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so this is why we, we've developed this system with that sort of hard and fast rule that um, we, you know, we use hard credits and soft credits. Um, so this is where I'm going to get really nervous because I'm <laughs> going to try and um, show you um, some of what we've done so far. Um, so please bear with me while I try and get this up and running. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to register for an event um, in PCP. And I think this is our... Um, extended you need to register as well. The what, sorry? That's, that's extended you need to register. Uh -huh. How do I do that? Hmm? Um, if it's set up like mine, you need to... Am I in? You might have to sort of sit jauntily. Oh, right, okay, so I'm going to do... <laughs> Hang on, bear That's with us. What I'll do is I'll um, change how this thing's set up. Bear with us, sorry. Oh, I can't do this. <laughs> yes, yeah, do that, sure. please. sounds a bit counterintuitive at first, but actually during the process, you'll see this during the, the demo, um, that people need to be able to pick their team, they need to be able to uh, see the history of that team. The team exists as an entity. Um, so it might have, that team might have done the same event for the last five years. Um, and you, as an organization, want to be able to communicate with that team. Uh, some of the people from that team might not be still active, they may not be alive anymore. Um, so it makes the most sense to create it as a context in its own right. So then you can start to do things like soft credit to it. You can um, start to tie a PCP or that belongs to the team back to that contact as well and treat it, treat it as, as its own entity. So it's mo it seemed the most logical way to do it. Can I ask a follow up to that? Sure. So the, the teams are organizations, that's right? Yes. And with regard to the PCPs, are the PCPs still tied to the individuals? They just so you're not actually because right now you can only hear from one individual. So, the, so yeah, so right, so we have so during the process actually if you tie it back to a team, if you create a team at the same time, there are two PCPs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's the individual PCP and the team PCP. And there's a relationship between you and that team for that event. Okay. So, so you have made Yes, so everything will, I'll talk right at the end about where the code is and how you can get access to it. Um, One of the big motivations is that a lot of people do things as a team, and, and, and just giving an example of they don't let you donate to a team, because they certainly didn't recently, and we were very keen that a lot of people just don't want individual donations. They want to be donated to as a ma en masse. Um, so we were sort of keen to encourage people to do that as a group. Okay. 
Um, so what I have just done is I've signed up to an event. If I can find the link, let me. I will say that this is due to go into final testing next week. Yeah. So if you see anything, just note it down and tell <laughs> me later, and we'll uh, put it on the bug list. So this is all going to have sort of a Drupal skin put over it. So this is sort of um, it in its raw form. Um, so what I did there was um, I signed up as a new user. Um, so for example, um, a user's on the website, um, and they go to the sport, sporting event page, and they see one of our cycling events, and they click register. Um, what they do is they come through to this screen. Um, so do they already ha have a place in the event? Um, because we have a situation where, because we work with some third party event organizers, people can actually um, register on their websites. So we had to build in this functionality. Um, so for the sake of this, I'm gonna say, yes, I do have a place already in London Bikeathon. And I'm gonna create my team. And I'm going to call my team SiddyCon2015. Um, I'm going to hit continue. And then I can um, email invite um, further people to join my team. So SiddyTest24. You can see I'm, I've, I've played around with a lot of test accounts. In <laughs> Um, over the last six weeks or so. Okay, so I'm inviting two of my friends to join me um, for the London Bikeathon. So hopefully, we'll be a three person team um, if these two people like me and decide um, that they're going to sign up. Um, so the team's being created and my teammates have been emailed. So if we hit continue. So what this does is this then takes me through to my individual PCP page. So as we said, every individual uh, by default has their own individual page. Um, so what I can do here is I can, can I assign my target? Um, I can normally edit this. Are you, a, you need to register as a user, you need to notify the email first, the authorized. Go to man class. Then. I'm the team admin though. But you've just signed up to the uh, site, so you're not an authorized user yet. Uh, okay, yeah, I see. So for the, for the journey for beginning lymphoma, everybody has to be a user, because they're gonna come back and edit their PCP. Um, so before Chris can actually edit it, he needs to verify his email address. Uh, and that's why he can't, he's trying to do an online edit. So, um, if I go to mail trap, but I haven't got the CV23. I need to verify the user. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of live demos, yeah. people. You can do that in um, CV. Wait, so if I go to new incognito. Sorry, bear with me, bear with me. <laughs> Yeah, so um, so, th so there's two parts to this development, if you like. So um, there's they already some users already had accounts, and there's already an existing framework of how people log in and, and, and what they do. So that part of the process hasn't been touched in in the whole PCP journey at the moment. It, it might be something that we can look at yeah. and say, actually, we need to streamline this now because we're getting uh, uh, 10,000 users as opposed to 100. Um, I mean one of the driving forces for this was ever time. Um, we have, we're launching uh, for an event called Light the Night, which we do with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the US. Um, and they were very keen that we have something out there for their corporate teams um, to do pretty much in the next two weeks. So we sort of, we took a few calls on what was important and what wasn't important. But certainly for the phase two, which comes in September, we'll be looking at quite a lot of that stuff. Okay, so if I've, my user is verified, so I'm hoping. If I just go back and refresh this, you should work. yeah, I should. I seem to have run that. <laughs> I should Yay. now be able to yes. Modify my fundraising target. Um, I can edit my page. 
welcome to my page donate to Yeah, so we basically, um, we're going to have the text file, um, which has got all the, all the sort of like text areas that we can add um, sort of advisory and, and help guidelines to, in order to, to sort of take the user through this journey. Yeah, I think what Cassia, it's Cassia, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah well, so what your question, what a question is, is do will end users know that they can click into the amount and, and edit it? So how do we make that clear to them? That yeah. So oh, okay. for our, for the way we're going to use it, we will have Drupal skins on these, which will make it clearer. I imagine the way I foresaw it in the when we did the wireframes for this was that those areas are almost pre-populated with instructional text. So click here to change this message, kind of in, to sort of hint the person to to make them do that. Yeah, so, so this is my individual right now. Um, and then here is the link through to, um, to the team page, um, of which I'm the team administrator of. Um, and I'll, I'll show you the team dashboard um, in a minute. So this is the sort of messaging that we'd look at getting on the individual page that explains, congratulations for doing this. You can do what you can do on this page and how you can interact with the page. Yeah. Um, so again, we have the same sort of amount of uh, edit functionality um, at the top here. Um, with additional um, sort of tasks of being able to invite additional team members. Um, and then it's on this screen that the team admin will um, approve or, um, or not um, prospective team members. So if we just go back to uh, uh, MailTrap, um, I can show you one of the emails that we sent out. So again, this is just in its very basic format. This will all be, you know, sort of have nice branding and styling. Um, so Civi Test 23 um, has invited you to partake in London Bikeathon and become a member of CiviCon 2015. Um, just follow the link here. So if I open the link in incognito window. This is one of the people that Chris invited as he went through the journey. Um, so then we need to sign up. Um, and again, so they'd go through the um, the same journey, um, and again, this page will be stylized. Stylized is stylized. that a word? Don't knock our website. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so they, they, they actually get the URL with the relevant link sure. in it, so they can just click through from that. Once they're, once they're in, they can change it. Yeah. So, um, don't get that. Okay. Yep. Uh, um. Okay, so then there's another email verification. I need to go and just grab the link again. Just say, I'm doing the bike thon. Um, again, I'm gonna say, yes, I've got a place, so, I, so we don't need to go through the registration again. Um, I'm joining an existing team because I've been um, invited um, and we're gonna we're gonna search for the team. I'm really hoping that this is gonna come up. This is a slightly different journey. The the journey was an email, yeah. The journey, if you're invited by email, Chris has slightly skipped the. <laughs> huh? Skewed that journey. Slightly skewed that journey. It was just slightly. Um, when you when you register on the site, you go straight through to a page that says, "Is this the team you wish to join?" Yes, no, and it actually it, re it recognizes the team that you're joining. So you can just click yes, journey over, and you're part of that team. Um, this journey here uh, is if you are got it. 
if I speak to Chris in the pub and he says, oh, I've got a team, and I go on and try and find it myself and go through that journey. So if I just, if I just so we'll backtrack sorry. now and uh, show you that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the, I mean, doing this journey throws up a lot of questions in terms of processes because if you invite someone, then it doesn't mean that they want to be a part of that team. So you have to ask the question, do you actually want to join this team? And then it's, well, they're not registered for the event. So then, well, then what do you do about that? So you've got to ask them, do they have a place? They might have it under a different email address. They might have it. They might have registered it in a different way. So there's, there's a lot of interesting kind of problems that this, this process mm. threw up. And we try to take it as much as possible. Yeah, but you're not only creating yeah, spaces for them, but you're also creating an event registration. Right, right. yeah. So if they don't have that's one, the they thing. need to register. So that's why the capture of the extra information is there, to, to complete the registration. They need to be... Um, so if I go on as Civi Test 24, Who's the No. He was invited. He was invited. So if I say yes I do. So this then yep. asks you it gets you to confirm the details just in case. You might get two invites from two different teams and you might click on the wrong one. We just it's that sort of step of validation. So yeah, this is my team that I want to join. Or the team that I want to join, sorry. Um, so then what I'm faced with is uh, my individual PCP page. Um, so yeah, that's been automatically created. Um, and then you see here that my request um, has been sent through to the team admin um, for approval. So it's just in case you've fallen out overnight since inviting and actually you don't want him in your team anymore and you hate him. So now I'm just going to show you that bit. Um, it's the dashboard. So is that the difference between sending your request and the soft credit or not? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So then the difference between this request and the soft credit is that the soft credit remains. So the donation is at the time that you made it, whatever you did at the time is kept. If you then leave that in, it doesn't matter because you can't then suddenly say, well, it's and we've limited for this release anyway that if you're a team admin, you can't leave the team because the complications around that were just too great. And actually the number of, and again, this is sort of testing this again, and the number of teams we expect are small enough that we can actually manage that sort of in-house. We will look to add that later, but it's um, for now where we are. Okay. So this is like the team admins um, page. So if I go on to manage this, this should then have a request. No, yeah, that is that's not. Page. We just have to scroll it down. Are you expecting the PCP developers an extension, or are you guys looking to do a team support? Um, so uh, it's an extension at the moment. Actually, um, let me just walk there, there, is, there is some core impact, and that's what we are starting to talk to Paul about. Um, there's a few ex additional hooks um, that were needed for the soft credit thing side of things, for the automatic creation of the PCP. There's a few additional hooks that the team put into the course. So at the moment, the extension kind of just overrides those, those core files. Um, but we're trying to get to a point where dashboard. those hooks are in core and the <coughs> extension can just Shutdown. plug in the functionality on top. And what version has CV in this on right now? This is all on 4.5. You just click right. the dashboard. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is something we've been talking to with Deepak about. Deepak's the one who's the code, and uh, we're just trying to work yeah, out at what point you can do that. So NLR's uh, upgrade cycle is normally uh, annual at the earliest, biannual normally, but um, th they want to go to four six, so that will probably be Christmas this year, uh, if we do go. So we'll definitely have to be up to four six by then. No, we yeah, we won't be able to get the. Right, we won't be able to get the core working, that would be 4.7, um, but that extension will have to be ported to 4.6, 4.6 by the end of the year anyway. Who are you logging in? Um, Civi Test 23. Seems to be having some form of security <laughs> issue with our, um, with our site. Um, <laughs> with our test site, you know. Actually, no, this is your test site, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to log back in as the team admin, and it's not, it's not there. Did you? 
Okay. So if I is that the dashboard? Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking if I grab the dashboard link and then just paste it in when I'm already logged in, it should yeah. yep. take me through. Yes. Okay. Cool. Have you scrolled all? Okay, so I've logged in as a team admin, and this is my uh, dashboard screen. So if I go to manage this page, it should say somewhere, my team. Shouldn't that say, um, I've had a request from one member, click here to manage it. Yes, I know this person, that's fine, he's part of my team. And then that's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, we remember the journeys. It's fast moving yeah. and all of this. It's, uh, <laughs> my, my work here is done. So that, the va that validation step is in there just in case for that person who comes along randomly and wants to join my team. And we don't want, especially if some of these things are being done in memory of people and things like that, we don't just want anybody joining a team. We need to have some control over and who it does and doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. The other important point is uh, obviously emails can be forwarded. So just because someone's got an invite link, it doesn't mean they actually were was the person that got invited. So um, so the, the extra step to always confirm is there um, just to make sure. Mm. And likewise, so we did build in the process for people to leave teams. Um, so either the team admin being able to throw them out or people being able to leave sort of of their own accord. But I, I think in reality that, that won't really happen. Um, obviously when you're doing these kind of sport events with a team you know you you generally do it with very close friends or work colleagues type thing there's, there's not really the situation where sort of you know people fall out or groups know, people split fall out with work colleagues when they're on stage it's uh, <laughs> just saying like, that's not so yes yeah, so we made a call to auto generate based on the admins amount and then for every ne new team member not to change it. Because if the admin then goes in and doubles it, but then it changes every time someone joins to go, it just gets confusing. So mm -hmm. it's set to whatever the admin sets it to. Yeah. Yeah. Or it will be. Soft credits don't go down. So if you donate to the team, the soft credit doesn't then go to the team members. It just sits at team level. It never gets modified. So people will be notified that a page has been created um, either through the user um, sharing it on um, Facebook or Twitter. Um, or I think we will build in the functionality of um, people being able to email their um, some of some of their contacts um, and then they'll get a link straight through to their um, to their page so the idea being that the um, the individual regardless if they're part of a team or not um, we'd like them to advertise their individual page whereas the team admin um, you know is probably more likely to advertise the team page yeah and it's team. giving the people the choice I mean there's there's events um, in the UK things like Movember that, that, that is a very much a participation event and it's about a team and you're more likely to donate to a team than you are to the individual. So it's very much based on the event you're doing, the type of friends you are. If it's a, there's a bit of competition between you, you might want to encourage people to, vote to donate individually. Whereas if you are all good friends, then you might think about the greater good and do it as a team. So it's, it's really giving that freedom to the people that are, are doing the event rather than us dictating how they should fundraise. Earlier 
this one? Uh, so no, at the moment, um, all the emails come out of LLR as LLR emails, obviously. They don't come from no. me as the team members going in email addresses. They don't come from the, yeah. the fundraiser. So the notification email. So it will say from, yeah, and there'll be a please do not reply to this, but it's very much worded from us saying your, your friend has invited you to this event. Um, so it's positioning that Would way. you be able to choose, so for, for instance, they may have, as we have, multiple accounts that we operate on, we've got products coming in our program and who's managing it, we would be able to switch. And would you also, right now you're saying you wouldn't reply back to these, but would you be able to set them up so that you could reply back to them? Yeah, I mean, the configuration of that is, is, is a technical thing more than anything, so I probably can deal with it. I mean, there's a process called Verif which allows you to do uh, variable address replies and stuff like that, but it's a. Could you mention the name? The V E R P is Verif. Verif. Okay. Um, but it's a it's a complex setup, so it's something that they probably need someone to get to do for them. Um, we have someone who are working on it, and we came up with a solution. But we we were looking at this, and we're just curious to how it would work. Yeah. With regard to managing it, so much of it for us is managing the flow of communications and being able to respond. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So the problem is uh, sending out Gmail is the issue because that's getting tied to a domain and it's, it's difficult to trick it into doing what you want it to do. Um, if, for Lucina, they use their own exchange server, so we can do what we like with the email and we can control the addressing however we want. Um, but your restriction is going to be on Gmail and what it allows you to do. Okay. We found a solution, by the way. That's good. Yep. If we look to roll this out, we'd probably be able to work that, that solution in because it's right. pretty advanced. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is all using the standard solution homework. So what, one of the things that we haven't really talked about is what this allows you then to do. So having all of this data in Divi means that where we've got um, the percentages of, um, we can show where we've got. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so having the percentages of how much is raised, uh, it's just part of the story. Because what you can actually do now is say, um, from everybody participating in this event, you are six in terms of how much you've raised. Um, so you can really kind of incentivize people to try and just push a little bit extra and become the, the highest fundraiser. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very easy thing to do because it's all in your system. You can control when you make that last push. You've got real data because it's all there. It's real time. You're not kind of waiting for a weekly push from your third party fundraising system. Um, and that works well for things like the, the, the event we're launching this for, which is um, Light the Night, which is a, a lot bigger event in the US, but in the UK it's, it's a lot smaller. But we have people like Barclays and um, other very, very rich people <laughs> competing to see who can raise the most money. So if we can actually rank them and show them who's beating who, that kind of encourages them to want to beat one another, which is always a good thing in my mind. So yeah. A bit of both. And then for, for LLS, it takes it, for Light the Night, it takes it to another level. So you can see teams within an organization, teams within the, so you, you've sort of got that added level of competition as well. Yeah, so the event registration is all through Civi as well. And it's sort of, we're using, our existing setup as is, um, which. Yeah, we have pretty, com some of them are pretty complex. Our, the one we showed, our London to Paris, um, that's a four, four, five day event where you have to have this legal disclaimers that people have to sign and various, that we send them out various t shirts and things like this. So it's, it, is, it does get particularly complex. Which actually, yeah, so that, that kind of takes us on to another issue that. Um, yeah, I feel that the the level of information that we have in Civi regarding some of those events um, is so deeply hidden within custom fields that um, is actually a bit of a nightmare to pull that out. So as a separate project that we're starting is we're taking the more complex events and we've, um, we're pushing the forms into Civi web forms um, so that we can we can capture that information, but without um, without that sort of feeding back into Civi. Um, because, for example, we don't need to know about T-shirt sizes, dietary requirements, um, or hotel accommodation. 
I certainly don't need to know that. My, sport, my colleagues in sports team do, and they need to access that quickly. But um, I want CV to be um, sort of focused on the analytical reporting of those events, um, of which those, uh, those data sets just, um, just, just don't come into it, basically. Um, sorry, do you want me to show a, yeah, a kind of... Yeah, so we can show the registration. So all of yeah. the Bikimis, I mean, Bikimis have been using um, CV CRM for over three years now. Um, so all of the event registrations go through CV CRM uh, registration pages. And some of the complex events like London to Paris, which had um, a, a kind of deposit and then a final payment, this has all been going for, for three years. So um, where we needed to dispose CV, we, we kind of did it at the time. Um, so building TCP on top is actually an easier thing to do because all of those uh, behind the scenes bits of work have already been done. Um, so if you look at the, you can either pay the, the deposit or you can pay the full amount. And if you just pay the deposit, you'll get uh, an email focus on time to say, okay, you need to now fulfill your balance. Um, you've got all the options, <coughs> you scroll down a bit. Mm. Uh, you've got the supplemental room that if you weren't a room, you could, you could book at the same time. Um, dietary requirements, mix of corn, there's a, there's a whole bunch of extra information that, yeah. that's required for these larger events. Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> In many, profiles. many different profiles, yeah. So there, um, are, there are different routes. I mean, this is for London Paris, there's a single route, but the, link, the, the London Bicathon has like three or four different routes, so you might say, okay, from a smaller five kilometre route or I'm going to the big 60 kilometre route. So we kind of push that all interactively through the, through the registration pages as well. No, they're, they're all mm -hmm. individual registrations, so they can pick whatever they want. They all different t-shirt sizes, whatever whatever they need. It's, mm. it's, it's individual to them. Yeah. So, yeah, the idea being that um, so if someone is invited via email, they'll get pushed down the um, the route to register um, unless they um, specify that they already have their own place um, within that event. Um, but that's only applicable to certain events and. Um, that is where we will need to sort of cross-check against our um, third-party event partners to actually make sure that that person has um, has actually registered and, and paid the correct fees. But that's sort of that's just an in intricacy of sort of the the event companies that that we use for for some of these events. Um, so our aim is to um, go live with the um, individual PCP and the team PCP. Um, in early May, where we will roll it out to our London and uh, Birmingham bikeathons. Um, so, hopefully, in a couple of months, we we may be in a situation where we have a few thousand um, personal campaign pages, uh, sort of operating and people registering for them. Um, yeah. Sorry, did you have a question? So this, um, well, so. We will do our sort of final round of intensive testing next week. Um, this has been. Um, when did this start, Thomas? Yeah, when did this project start? When did the build start? Maybe about the three build. months ago. No, three months. Five weeks ago. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so we, we, this is something we've been discussing for quite a while because of the issues that raised last year. And it's been sort of bubbling on. And as ever, when, when the issues arose, we had a lot of traffic coming through the site, so we were like, well, we can't do it now, and it was Christmas, then it was January, and everyone was good. So it, it, the time it took for us to get around to actually making that beautiful flow diagram um, did take a, a sort of bit of a prolonged time, but the build itself, yeah, has been sort of five weeks. Yeah. Um, and we're in the process now of just doing the front end in Drupal, which the guys are working on, hopefully getting design signed off today, hopefully. Um, so we should be sort of moving that forward in the next week, fingers crossed. Good um, question. So, my plan wasn't to release it on the extensions directory, but I know that we've been talking on the partner forums about releasing extensions that aren't really uh, what you want kind of end users to just download and try. Um, so, in that scenario, yeah, we could push it out. Um, a, and a my beta or something. Right, yeah. And my feeling would be we would do that at the same time that we went live. So, once once Leukemia accepted it, we would, we would push that out and, and let other, other cracks. At the moment, it's an hour Git repo, so you can you can 
you take it from there and bundle it on. Um, and all, m most of the stuff works. It's been tested. It's been through test cycles. It just hasn't been through the final test cycle yet. Um, so we're not expecting too much to come out of that. I mean, the final test cycle is we're looking at copy. We're looking at you know sort of tweaks to, to display and things like that. It's not the, the fundamentals behind it. Are, are, we're pretty confident. In. And we already have a huge list to go into phase three, but don't worry. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the, uh, I, I think the majority of it would be okay, but um, the, the user sign-up process would need to be looked at and, and how we handled that. Um, but the rest of it is, is pretty much the same. So, right, so this, the scaling issue was two parts, really. One was um, some of the integration. So in order to build it in Drupal, um, the integration to the payment gateway had to be done in Drupal as well. So that was kind of built very quickly, not really tested properly. So things like if somebody... I wasn't working there at that time. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. So if someone, if someone got partway through a payment and it completed, they got to the confirmation page, there was the ability for them to hit back and re resubmit, make two or three contributions, not know that they've done it. Uh, and there was all sorts of issues around that, and that created locking issues. Um, there were lots of groups that had been set up in the background to kind of deal with different bits of data. Um, and the way Civi was handling the group meant there was locking in the data, because the API kept firing the information and trying to, trying to update the Civi database. Um, so there was a lot of contention of resources like that. So what we're hoping is that, um, moving it to Civi means it's one stream and there's one set of transactional data that goes through at one point in time uh, and we can manage it a bit better than what it was in the kind of very, very approach where it seems like the system was trying to update the same uh, core data but from multiple sources and it, it just wasn't working right. So what we'll do is we'll monitor this on one or two, uh, the first one or two small events which are, which are the first ones that are going to launch uh, and then we'll start load testing up and seeing seeing what happens uh, and how it, how it behaves. But up until now, even through the busy periods, we've never had an issue with event registration. So even for the larger events, when they're coming up to their closing dates and you end up with 100 people registering in an hour or whatever it is, with all those kind of complex information and paying, we've, not, we've never had an issue with kind of dropping out during the registration process. Whereas with DFT, we were getting issues I don't know, 20 a day, 30 a day, mm. it was becoming very difficult to stay on top of it. Yeah. I mean, we've got, so there's a couple of stages of testing. We've got a, next week we'll run testing in-house where we'll get everybody in the organization to basically just hit it, um, which we're, only, we're not a big organization, so that's not massive. But then the Light the Night event, we'll sort of, it will grow it a little bit more. And yes, that's testing it live, that's risky, but we're at that stage, the time is upon us. Um, and then we'll gradually, as part of this, so we'll sort of build it up. And get to it. Uh, we're 120 people. So we're not, not massive. Ten percent digital team. So that's a, happy about that. That's what, what Rich was saying, that the Drupal guys are building their, the kind of website side of it. Um, so what we did as part of this development is every single component has got an API to it as well. So um, what they're going to use is just the APIs to find the teams, to find the active pages for an event, things so like that. Just Drupal. Right, yeah. yeah. But um, so for example, one of the um, a functionality requirement that's come up for phase two is actually making some of the pages hidden. Um, so to, to not appear in those um, search menus. So for example, when Rich said um, about some of our corporate partners, uh, various teams within Barclays, should we say, um, they would not be happy if um, sort of the general public were able to stumble across those pages, um, should we say. It's because they're not raising enough money and they're just a bit embarrassed, that's all. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> 
Um, and individuals also don't, they get a bit freaked out when they type their name into Google and suddenly their fundraising page is there. So we need that ability to, to step that back. Um, but for the most part, yeah, you'll go in, you can search for an individual it, through Drupal and then that will pick out. You can also find, you're allowed, you can find teams through, through the city pages through that step. I want to join a team and then search for a team name, but you need to know what that team name is in order to do that. So. Let's go for it. Yeah. Oh, I've been banging that drum. Yeah. Um, <laughs> again, we um, we had to push that to phase two because um, the development timeline was so tight. But yeah, I'm I'm very much saying right. No, we we need we need a new tab uh, within the contact record that pulls in the key headline figures um, and you know the um, the page URL and um, this and that and you know have have each. Um, what am I trying to say, have, have each one sort of segregated, if that makes sense. Because the idea is that um, with this, we'll have sort of individuals and teams coming back year on year to, um, to do these events with us. So we need to have that kind of relationship history um, accessible and available on the contact tab. So you knew that question. One off. Yeah. So Civi Mouse obviously <coughs> can work with SMS. So you could SMS as opposed to email if you wanted to. At the moment, they have this purely email communication. Um, with mobile, I think the site's responsive anyway. So we are, we're redesigning our site. We're launching that in September as well. The current site is responsive. Um, the new site will be responsive. Um, so it, it should all work. But that's again through the Drupal front end uh, mm -hmm. rather than the Civi bit. I mean, I think that's, a, that's a, a very, very good point idea. And it's something we are, I mean, I think what we've done and, and what I've certainly done in the 12 months I've been at LLR is trying to get the baseline done. So get, get this being able to take payments without the whole thing falling down. I think once this goes live in a couple of weeks and we're comfortable with that, then we're going to look at that next level. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we use Facebook and things like that to help that community. And everyone that's doing Bikeathon has their own group and things like this. But I think working out how we can do this, maybe with email groups and things like this for people that are, are doing it, is a, it would be a really good next step. Um, we just have too much yeah. work on at the moment. That's it. And I think actually the, this may be a phase three, um, <laughs> yeah, just to let you know. Not busy. Um, the sort of having the ability for the fundraiser to, to go back onto their, um, onto their page and add like their, um, like an ongoing diary um, for their training and to actually like respond to some of the um, and leave their leave their comments to some of the donations that have been. Yeah, have I mean been we have there. a pretty strong blogging platform that people put up their training currently. We're developing that and, and trying to build that. It's not necessarily directly linked into this, but we certainly can look at how that crosses over and how the blogs are potentially tagged. Well, they are currently tagged with the events, mm. not necessarily with the team at the moment. But we can yeah, we'll definitely look at working on that. Cool. Magic, In magically. I'm driving one of the cars this year, so I just get to sit behind people and beep at them. It's going to be great fun. And you've got a really good road bike, and you've got. And you take a ferry days. across the water bit as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's quite a big event in the UK at the moment. There's a. I can't remember how many charities do it now. It must be hundreds of charities. Mm. There's a. You have to pick your time of year quite carefully, so you're not convoying with another similarly brand branded charity so it's a, it's a very popular one but in terms of actually the the terrain it, it's quite flat isn't it it's not really it's northern france it's not and, yeah. and the roads are good so it's not like a we're not saying it's easy no <laughs> by no, at no, least no, no. actually imagination <laughs> um but yeah it's uh, it's a popular event it really is it's, uh, it's a big one. cool well
Thanks. Thank you very much for sitting and listening to us. <laughs> Enjoy the next two days. Um, please come and talk to us if you've got any questions. Just grab us. Um, not a problem. <laughs>